Okay, we'll start today. Unit two. Unit two. First topic is IoT sensation sensing and actuation. So the uh, contents under this is introduction to sensors. So first, any of the IoT applications may be consumer IoT applications or industrial IoT applications or hobby based deployment applications. Sensing is the first stage, activation is the final stage. So the basic science of sensors and actuators is transduction. Transduction is the process of converting one form of energy into another form. So, the transducer is a physical means of enabling transduction. Transducers take energy in one form. Energy in one form means it can be a chemical energy, mechanical energy or a light energy, sound energy and converting that into another form of energy. Another form can also be a electrical energy, mechanical, chemical or light energy. So, to understand the transducer, we will see this diagram. This diagram consists of transducer uh, as a sensor, processor, transducer as a actuator. So, from this diagram, sensor plus processor acts as a transducer. In the same way, actuator plus processor acts as transducer. So, the sensor will take input signal from the uh, outside environment, process it. After processing the data, it will send to actuator. From the actuator, you will be getting the output signal. So, throughout all this, we can observe some form of energy transformation is happening from input signal to output signal. So, sensors and actuators functions as transducer. If you take an example of public announcement system, in public announcement system, microphone converts sound waves into electrical signals. These electrical signals are amplified by an amplifier. Finally, a loudspeaker converts this amplified electrical signal to a sound wave. So, first microphone is a sensor here. For in order to increase or amplify the electric signal, you are using amplifier and output is given by actuator. Next, there are different types of sensors. Some of them are listed in this figure like alcoholic sensor, ult ultrasonic sensor, IR sensor, LDR sensor, gas sensor. If there is any leakage in the gas, to detect that we can use gas sensor, rain sensor and photodiode sensor, IR proximity sensor and PNR sensor. So, these are some of the listed sensors. Now, we will see what is the difference between the transducer, sensor and actuator. So, transducer means it converts energy in one form to another form. So, here one form can be electrical, mechanical likewise and converting into another form is also in form of electrical, mechanical, light etc. Sensors means it will convert various forms of energy into electrical signal. Actuator, it converts electrical signal into a form of mechanical energy. This is the different based on the definition of transducer, sensor and actuator. In the same way, if you consider the parameter domain, under domain transducer is, it can, it can be used to represent sensor as well as actuator. That means, transducer can be used as sensor as well as actuator. But whereas, sensor it can be used as input transducer only. In the same way, actuator can be used as output transducer. The next parameter for differentiating these three are function. So, tra transducers can work as a sensor or as an actuator, but not simultaneously. Sensors used for assessing environmental stimuli into signals and actuators used for converting electrical signals into me mechanical form. Examples, transducer is you can take example of any sensor or any actuator. Under sensors, you will have temperature sensor, humidity sensor, gas sensor, accelerometry sensors and actuators, motors, four heads. So, the output we are going to get it from the actuators. Sensor will take input from the environment. Now, definition of sensor, we are going to 
learn in detail about sensor. So, sensor is basically a device which will, which will measure physical input from the environment and convert it into a form of data. So, using this data we can represent either by a human or a machine. So, sensors can measure, it can quantify or respond to ambient changes in the environment. Ambient changes means suppose you, uh, you are placing sensors in weather monitoring system according to the weather changes. Ambient changes means according to the environment changes in that physical environment sensors can measure and respond and stimulate to that particular changes and whatever it is sensing or whatever is uh, measuring all are being deployed with the help of internet. Next, they generate responses to external stimuli and convert into a typical ele electrical signal. So, they respond means whatever the uh, environment based on the environment changes, whatever the data we are getting according to that it will stimulate and convert into electrical signals. That we will see in the next slide with an diagram. For example, heat is converted to electrical signal in a temperature sensor and Atmospheric pressure is converted into electrical signal in a barometer. So, if you see this diagram, you will understand better. This is the environment in which we have kept a temperature sensor. This temperature sensor will go on uh, check the temperature levels. Suppose if there is a fire in this environment, because of this fire, the temperature goes up. So, whenever it is going up, because of there is change, you will be having some stimuli generated by sensing. So, the temperature sensor will see the high in the temperature, process this data and whatever the output, you will be seeing it on the monitor. If the internet is connected to monitor or mobile phone, because of this change, what is to be done will be displayed in the monitor. So, this is what we have seen in the previous slide they generate responses to external stimuli and convert into typical electrical signal. External stimuli means if there is change in the environment, it will uh, react accordingly. Next, we will see uh, the various types of sensors, different types of sensors. So, sensors are classified based on these parameters, pow power requirements, sensor output and measured property. Based on this, different types of sensors are divided. Under that, first we will see power requirements. So, what is power requirements means how the sensor is operating that decides the power requirements. To based on this power requirements, sensors are divided into active sensors and passive sensors. What are active sensors? Active sensors means it is a type of sensor in which one can transmit a signal into environment and measure the response that comes back. So, here without any external power resources, the active sensors can work. Active sensors do not require any external circuitry or any external power or any external mechanism to provide it power. So, uh, it, without that actively it will work. Example is ultrasonic system. Ultrasonic system, this is one of the type of the sensor. So, here a pulse of ultrasonic sound is emitted. After sound is emitted, if any object is seen on the way, then the pulse will reflect back. So, sensor detects what is the time taken for it to emit the signal and detect the, uh, detect the object. So, based on that, it will indicate the distance of the object. So, here we are not using any external power for the sensor. This is an example. Another example here is a thermocouple. A thermocouple is a sensor is exposed to increase in temperature. So, thermocouple will every time check the temperature. So, here if you want to light up this candle, we, we have connecting it to the voltage meter. So, here if there is increase in the temperature that is detected in the voltmeter and the candle is lighting on. So, every time this thermocouple will check the changes in the temperature. Next is passive sensors. So, passive sensors are the sensors which are only going to listen what is happening. So, that means they require an external mechanism to power them up. The sensed properties are modulated with sensors inherited characteristics 
to generate patterns if you take example light sensor light sensor it detects if the light is shining on it it will wait for the light uh, to shine on that particular sensor and it will act accordingly in the same way infrared sensor which detects the temperature of an object another example if you take resistance temperature detector it it is one of the sensor it is a device that resists resistance will change with a change in the temperature now if you see here you require an external power supply for this type of sensors so if you require external power supply we call that type of sensors as passive sensors next category is sensor output so based on the output sensors are divided into analog sensors and digital sensors so analog sensor analog sensor is whatever we are getting as an output will get in a form of analog signal that means we are getting the continuous form of data so here uh, the uh, data will be in an analog signal so this analog signal will range from 0 to 5 volts example if you take uh, temperature sensor speed sensor pressure displacement strain these are all the sensors which comes under analog sensors for example a thermometer can be uh, can be used for measuring temperature of a liquid so here if the temperature is more then the the resistance in the liquid will vary the threshold value of the liquid varies based on this threshold value we'll say whether the person is having high temperature or low temperature so whatever we are getting we are getting in a form of continuous signals next type of sensors are digital sensors so in this digital sensor output output will be in a form of zeros and ones binary signal so here uh, binary output signal is in the form of one or zeros that means on or off whether to work or whether not to work whether to on the sensor or whether to off the sensor this is called as digital sensors you will get the output in a form of zero sign ones and the next property is measured property based on the property sensors are divided into scalar sensors and vector sensors so scalar sensors means this will describe the motion of an object that is magnitude of an object scalar sensor ma mainly depends upon magnitude examples of scalar sensors are color sensor pressure sensor temperature sensors etc next type example if you take a thermometer is a scalar sensor are unaffected by changes in the orientation capable of detecting temperature changes means here the scalar sensors are only depending upon magnitude not on orientation but whereas vector sensors is they describe by a number a unit or a direction orientation is important along with magnitude orientation is also important in a ve uh, vector sensors so if you are driving the car in which direction you are driving a car if the aircraft is going on the space with the help of gyroscope wh what is the motion or the orientation can be detected by gyroscope so orientation can be in three axes like x axis y axis z axis so basically vector sensor depends upon orientation scalar sensors depends upon only magnitude thank you